Hi everyone, welcome to the Learn Kubernetes with Google. Today, the topic is introduction to admission webhooks. What are admission webhooks? So before we take a deep look at the admission webhooks, let's first take a look at the admission controller procedure. The admission controller is a piece of code that intercepts requests to the Kubernetes API server prior, um, prior to persistence of the object, but after the request is authenticated and authorized. Kubernetes ships with a lot of admission controllers, and there are 70 of them are enabled by default now. A lot of things which we assume are native to Kubernetes are actually done by these admission controllers. Next, let's take a look at, the, uh, at some examples. First is the namespace lifecycle controller. So here is an example we are trying to create a deployment with the name myDeploy in the namespace test. And when the object gets to the namespace lifecycle controller, if the test namespace is currently in terminating status, so there's no point to create a new deployment there. So the namespace lifecycle controller will simply just fill the request and return back to the user. Another example will be always pull images controller. Now, uh, we use kubectl try to create a port with the name my port and the image pull policy uh, to if not present. And the always pull images controller will turn the image pull policy to be always before it is um, persistent to etcd. So after those examples, we can see that the admission controllers can be categorized into two types, mutating admission controllers and validating admission controllers. Mutating controllers may modify the objects they admit, while validating controllers may not. The admission controller process proceeds into, in two phases. In the first phase, mutating admission controllers are run, and in the second phase, validating admission controllers are run. If any of the controllers in either phase reject the request, the entire request is rejected immediately and an error is returned to the end user. Among those admission controllers shipped with Kubernetes, two take a special role because of their nearly limitless flexibility, validating admission webhooks and mutating admission webhooks. They do not implement any policy decision logic themselves. Instead, the respective action is obtained from a REST endpoint of a service running inside of the cluster. This approach decouples the admission controller logic from the Kubernetes API server, thus allowing users to implement um, customer logic to be executed whenever resources are created, updated, or deleted in a Kubernetes cluster. And the difference between those two kinds of admission controller webhooks is pretty much self-explanatory. Mutating admission webhooks may mutate the objects, while validating admission webhooks may not. And the mutating admission webhooks are called in serial, while validating admission webhooks are called in parallel. And next, we will take a look at why do we need admission webhooks. There are a lot of use cases we can leverage the power of admission webhooks. For example, the admission controller can increase security by mandating, uh, mandating a reasonable security baseline across an entire namespace or cluster. For example, we can allow pulling image only from certain registry or disallow containers from running as root. And also admission controllers can help to enforce the adherence to certain practices such as having good labels, annotations, resource limits, or other settings. And also, admission controllers can help with validating the configuration of the objects running in the cluster and prevent any obvious misconfiguration from hitting your cluster. That's today's topic. Hope you will enjoy. Thank you.